If you're looking to understand programming and periodization models with a very simple understanding, well, I'm gonna help you here today. Let's get to it. Hey there, Brent Spoy here from Thirst Jam, and I wanna help you today understand the four primary programming models in a very quick, simple video. Now, programming can be quite confusing because of all the different kind of models, and there's certainly pitfalls to certain different types of programming models. So we're gonna kind of talk about those quickly on the board as well. But the big thing I want you to understand here is that you, all programming models are going to use a blend of each other to some degree. You're very rarely gonna find some that are just purely focused on one thing, and you're probably not just gonna do one programming model, especially not for an eternity of training, but how you're gonna use those in different models in different periods of time, depending upon what you need. So the key thing here quickly to understand today is that these models are going to blend together over time and if you can do that optimally you're going to find out that your training works better for you in the long term as you're able to sync these different types of programming models together. All right, so the first main programming model is going to be linear periodization. And really quickly, what that means is if we look over time, our weights and everything are just going to go up and we're going to get stronger over time. Now, but also we gotta think that volume and intensity is going to change as well. So generally what you're gonna see in most training programs that are linear are going to be that usually down here is going to be what you would call like your hypertrophy range. So think about doing everything for like three sets of 10 and then through normal linear periodization, then you would go to like three sets of eight and then you might go to three sets of six and then three sets of five and then three sets of three, three by two, and then you might do like a two by one. And so over the course of time, clearly the loads are going to continue to get heavier, but your volume of work here is going to go down. So we're from doing 30 reps to 24 to 18 to 15 to nine, you kind of get the idea. So usually as the weights get heavier, you're not going to be able to do as many reps, which is pretty normal, right? But with normal linear periodization, that's the goal is to always put more weight on the bar. So basically that would just be like adding five pounds or basically similar starting strength to where you're just gonna to continue to add five pounds to those lifts. Now, the, obviously the main pitfall here is you can't continue to add weight forever, right? You can't always add five pounds to the bar. I couldn't do three sets of 10 at 225 week one and then expect 52 weeks later to being able to do you know, 500, right? For that, that's not going to work. And this is one of the pitfalls of linear periodization. But the key thing that you wanna take here from linear periodization is that as we revisit exercises or do things, the long-term goal here is to continue to try to go up in weight. So, you know, over time, long-term, you might find different fluctuations here of what you're doing training-wise, but if we look at this over a 10-year span, hopefully what you did here when you first started training to what you're doing after 10 years, you're doing much more weight over the course of that time. And so that's where linear periodization is gonna be the most important when it comes to figuring out what you're doing from a training perspective is that you're continuing to trying to add weight over time, even though it may not be linear, you wanna make sure that those weights are trending linearly. And that's where these other programming models come in handy because now we can talk about how we're gonna fluctuate this over time with these other models. The next programming model we're gonna talk about is going to be block periodization. And so block periodization is going to look a little bit different. So we're still gonna keep that linear progress in mind, but there's usually um, three different phases, accumulation, transmutation, and the realization. And so what that usually means is that early in training, you're usually going to be focusing on a high amount of workload. So this would be your accumulation based phase. And this is where you're going to try to get in a bunch of work. And so the best way to think about this is that this is gonna be more GPP in nature. Um, this is going to be more general in nature. It may not be super specific, but we're gonna try to get a high volume of workload here. So going back to what we did last time, this could kind of be like your three sets of 10. And you might just do this on majority of your exercises to get a high volume of workload. But we're not going to do this forever. We're gonna do this for a period of time. Most blocks, you'll find that people are usually doing them three to six weeks is kind of the normal time frame here, but these can obviously go longer. Um, but your goal here would be more of like your hypertrophy based work is what you're going to do. So you'd have a hypertrophy based block in all of the exercises that you're doing. Then the next exercise or next block, I'm sorry, that we're going to do be the transmutation. So this is going to be not as much workload, but this is going to be where we still try to drift a little bit more towards that strength, but we're not gonna be in high intensities yet, like in that 90% range. We're gonna be more in that like 70 to 80% range, maybe even slightly higher up to 85. Um, but the key thing you wanna make sure here is that your reps are going to be dropping down and we're gonna do a little bit different style of training to where we might be doing say four sets of five. 
So while we certainly might be getting some hypertrophy here, this is going to be somewhat strength oriented, but we're doing a, again, still a volume of work, but it's going to feed into what we're doing next. So the goal here, same thing, probably three to six weeks and on average of your normal training blocks here. Um, but the goal here is to go from doing your higher volume based work here. And you know, this is usually probably where your density based work is. You're not going to have as much density. So you're probably gonna have longer rest here because again, four sets of five, that's gonna be much heavier weight than doing three sets of 10. Again, this is probably gonna be like 60 seconds of rest. And here you're probably gonna use like up to 90, maybe even 120 seconds of rest, depending upon how much you're pushing the intensity of these exercises, how much you're leaving in the tank. So the goal here is to build a good solid foundation, then move into some strength-based work. This is still gonna be somewhat hypertrophy related, but not as much. The goal is to not really necessarily get in shape, but to use what we did to get in shape, to be in shape to do these exercises. This is almost the preparatory work for your main work. And then the final one here is then going to be your um, realization phase. And your realization phase is usually going to be your 90% plus. So this is where you're really going to push your strength. So you're probably going to do sets of like one to three, maybe more so of one to two. And again, that 90% plus range. So this is where you're going to have a lot of your strength. And this is where you might rest two to three minutes. And so you're gonna have plenty of rest here, but you're gonna use your hypertrophy based work and your general strength work that you did to drive up what you're doing here. That's where you're gonna push those weights so that as you get closer towards say competitions or events that you're touching 90% load. But here the key thing is the recovery aspect from a muscular perspective is going to be easier because we're not going to have to worry about doing as much volume of work we're just going to make sure we do enough strength based work here so they get stronger and so you're going to make sure that you're not probably putting on as much muscle mass here but you're going to get that realization so this can be great during in series in season period times of training so that you're going to be lifting heavy enough but not with high volume um, but you're also going to still be developing general strength and absolute strength if you happen to push us up higher if you're like say a power lifter or what have you now you can notice that the pitfall here is again that you're going to have several weeks of periods so you're going to see some detraining but the unique thing about block training is that these are fluctuation based things so you don't have to go in this order all the time once you've developed a little bit of accumulation you can go back and forth between these phases of training and then you let's say again we come back to our accumulation base back here so you can do these based upon your events or what you have going on and now you can say okay i've got a competition this week this week and this week so these are the weeks i'm going to lift it at 90 percent i'm going to decrease my volume from these so that i can be able to recover from my practice and the games but then also come back to building some general strength those weeks that i don't have events but it's going to be able to be easy to recover from so the main thing you need to take away here is that it's easier to fluctuate what you want to do but again, you're still going to have phases of training somewhat like in linear periodization, but they're not going to be linear because they're going to move from week to week of what you're doing in each block. So that's the key thing to understand here is you can have a lot more fluctuation and you're going to pick your heavier periods of training um, or competitions to have your heavier periods of training. And then when you're not doing that, you're going to make sure you're more in the accumulation and transmutation based phase of your block training. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is undulating periodization. Um, and this is going to be a little bit like block, but the key thing is that this can happen either from a weekly, a monthly uh, perspective of how we're doing stuff. And it can even go from session to session, quite frankly. So the key thing here, if we look over a long period of time, let's say this is like a, we'll use a week, for example, here for our example. The key thing here with undulating periodization is that we're going to have low, medium, and high base days. And so that can be low, medium, and high based in terms of volume. It can be also of intensity, but generally just like with linear periodization, usually if you're gonna have high intensity, you're gonna have lower volume. Those should be somewhat offsetting in almost any training program that you do. You shouldn't necessarily have a high intensity or a high volume in the same session. Uh, that's gonna be a recipe for disaster in terms of all your recovery, uh, but also just doing too much workload in general. So if we look at, let's say um, a week, for example, so, We'll just take a normal five day a week training perspective. Then we can make sure that we can undulate our days of every single training day. So let's just say that we're doing uh, different movements here, but we're gonna look at volume first. So let's say Monday is gonna be a higher volume based day. Tuesday is gonna be a lower. Wednesday might be a medium. Thursday might be a lower. And then we might go to another higher volume based day. So you can tell that things are fluctuating over the course of the week. So our volume, when our volume is high, that means our intensity is low. 
but on the following day, we might have a lower volume, higher intensity based day, and then a medium, again, you know, lower volume, and then a higher volume. And so the goal here is that you can be able to recover from these higher volume based draining days, or you can even flip this around to the same thing intensity. If this is your high intensity based day, this is going to be your lower base intensity day, medium, low, and high. So the big key thing is here, you're gonna have those high, low, and medium based days. It doesn't have to always look like this. I'm just giving you a very simple example here, but you're never going to have multiple high days together or multiple medium days together past probably maybe two sessions. Um, more so you're wanting to track these high base training sessions, whether it be intensity or volume, depending upon your goals. Um, but they're gonna undulate from uh, session to session. But we could also look at this from a week per week perspective. So if we take these away and we just make these weeks, so if this is week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, we can look at the same thing. If it's volume or intensity, it does not matter. If we have a higher, let's say you use volume again, if we have a high volume based week, we were then gonna have a lower volume based week so that we can recover from that higher volume and then we might go to a medium based day so that we can get a little more stimulation, recover again before we come back to that higher volume based day. Um, and again, these are looking at weeks, but you take the same idea. If we use those with weeks, we're gonna have a high volume week, a low volume week, a medium volume week, a low volume week, and a high volume week. And that would be able to allow you to recover from these in a long period of time. Usually you're gonna see more undulating like this for intensity in terms of week purposes, um, rather more so than volume, because usually if you're doing things appropriately in the week, everything will be okay. But having lots of high period of stress, so let's say you're taking a lot of 90% plus lifts on this week and a lot of 90% plus lifts on this week, you necessarily don't wanna always take 90% plus lifts every single week that you train, uh, depending upon how you believe you're training, but usually in the undulating periodization model, that's what you're gonna to want to do is change that from week to week as well as day to day. So there's daily undulating, which is usually DUP, um, but undulating can also be from a week to week perspective. And usually this is kind of what you see in block training, but blocks usually go more several weeks of doing those periods where undulating is usually looking more at a week perspective and a daily perspective of what you're fluctuating to get things. So again, the goal here is still for the weights to trend upward as normal, but you just want to make sure that you're controlling what you're doing and you know different people are going to do different things again this is just a very general uh, example but you can obviously fluctuate these and different people are going to be able to handle different things so stronger individuals are going to have have less higher days of their intensity and you know less strength trained or newer people can have more of these higher intensity days and fewer of these lower intensity based days and still recover from their training so the pitfalls here though as you can tell, is there's a lot more planning involved and you've got to know when you have a high week, when you have a low week, and you've got to make sure that what you're doing from a training perspective, you understand that you're not overshooting or overdoing things on your high. Or, um, you know, you can push things here, but you want to make sure like on your low and your medium days, you're not pushing too hard because if these get pushed too high, now my low becomes a medium, my medium becomes a high, and this can really throw off your training that you're doing and the way you've got things laid out long term. All right, the last thing we're talking about is going to be the conjugate or concurrent based system. And it's really hard to kind of draw a map of what you're going to do. But the quick thing you need to understand here with most conjugate based work is you're going to have basically a heavy lower body day, a heavy upper body day, and then you're going to have your speed lower and your speed upper. Now, I've got plenty of videos on the conjugate system, so I'm not going to go too crazy into detail here. But usually what you're going to see, those heavier days, the speed days. So you're kind of seeing that from an undulating perspective, you're taking your two high days and your two lower or medium based days. I would say medium because these would be your GPP days down here to where you do recovery based work. But regardless, you're going to see how that fluctuates. But here's where you're going to have a lot of variation. And the key thing here is that the variation is going to prevent you from banging up your body too much, doing the same thing over and over and over. So if you're back squat for weeks on weeks on weeks, several sessions, you're going to get nagging issues and pains in your hips, shoulders, elbows, knees. You know, if you continue the same movements repetitively for a long period amount of time, you're going to have wear and tear. And so the goal behind the conjugate system is to prevent that wear and tear, prevent that accommodation when it comes too quickly. Um, and that's going to be good from a long-term training perspective. So you can have multiple variations here and you're training multiple qualities as well, which is nice because now we get to make sure we're touching all these qualities simultaneously in a week, but every from week to week, month to month, that's never going to ever be an issue with those other models. If you're not doing speed-based work or you're not doing things to address max strength, like say in the, you know, the block periodization where you're doing that accumulation phase, you're not doing anything to develop that general um, strength that can also be a pitfall. Well, here 
you're going to make sure you touch all those. So that is the positive. The negative though is doing too much variation too quickly. Um, and this is where I think too many people get carried away with conjugate stuff is having a, you know, a hundred exercise list of variations when only we probably really need about 30 if I'm being honest. So you can pick, you know, 10 to 12 different squat and bench press variations and same thing about eight to 10 deadlift based variations. And if those are the things that you're tracking long term, now we can have different variation, but at the same time, know what we're tracking, having proper metrics, and then also preventing that fatigue and that long term accumulation buildup of you know, the movement patterns that can bang up on your shoulders, hips and knees. So the quick thing that you want to understand here is that if we're going to do different variation based work, we're going to try to sync this all together really quick. We can see where there's different pitfalls. And so what we do with each model is we kind of blend them together into basically one holistic based model to where we always want our training getting a stronger linear long period of time. We want to have different blocks of training. I do think that's still important. So depending upon your time of year, you can have more hypertrophy based training. It may not mean you're doing your strength work, but let's say like after competition for powerlifting, for example, you want to have a hypertrophy based phase. So there's nothing wrong with using that aspect of block based training. And then you can obviously go down and surf that to where you're going to build your weights up over time. And then when you come back into this intensity based work, now's where we can start to go with a little bit of undulating and conjugate based work to where now, after we want to make sure we're progressing things linearly, we're focusing on different types of blocks of training. Now we can make sure that we can use some kind of conjugate form. But one of my favorite ways to do this is to essentially have A and B weeks so that we have variation A and variation B for both my squat, my bench press, and my deadlift. And you know, it doesn't really matter what we're picking here. That's going to be necessarily up to you. But let's just say that I'm doing a safety bar squat here and I'm doing a box squat here. Basically, I'm going back and forth with those exercises for a period of time. So, you know, that could be for a couple different training blocks. It could be for six weeks. It could be for 12 weeks. That's up to you. Um, but then we can also undulate this as well to where we can maybe week one have, you know, a hard set of five. And then week two, we could have, we could have a hard set of one. And then week three, we could have a hard set of two. And week four, we can have hard set of one again so that we're doing different intensities here and then on my fifth week I can take a deload or from a training perspective I could just nix that max effort work entirely I could just make sure that I'm doing you know three sets of three here making sure I can recover so that when I come back to my week one I'm going to make sure that again I'm trying to again add five pounds here add five pounds here add five pounds here add five pounds here and this is going to circle back into what we do linearly over the long period amount of time. And then you would just swap out your exercises here, again, more conjugate based work. You would swap out your exercises, depending on how these would go, where your weaknesses are, what you have going on. And then over the course of period of time, then you can start to change some of your accessory work from a block perspective. Your accessory work could be more hypertrophy oriented or on. And then as you get closer to say a meet, then your hypertrophy work can then go towards more strength related and you can actually pull back on that volume and that's going to let you recover from what you're doing as you go to approach the meet and you're getting more specific and you're going to be touching more of those 90% base weights on a more frequent basis um, as you happen to do that. So hopefully you can see how this all kind of comes in full circle. The key thing I want you to understand here is that you probably shouldn't be married to just one type of programming model or method. You probably should use a blend and you probably are using a blend. You probably just don't think you are. Um, but it's going to be better long term perspective in terms of what you're doing. And the goal here is to make this incredibly simple for you to understand that what you're doing from a current perspective at the end of the day should lead towards linear progress. You want phases of training and then you want enough variation that you can keep your body healthy, continue to progress stuff, and that you're undulating what you're doing from a work perspective so that you're not constantly pushing red line all the time. You're going to have those phases so that you can recover faster and that's going to give you the long term progress that you're looking for. So if you happen to enjoy today's video, do me a favor, smash that like button, leave a comment. I'd really appreciate it. Hopefully you took one quick thing away from this video. I know I covered a lot in a short period amount of time. If you're looking for more detailed information, I'm going to have everything down in the description box below of all these program models into much more detail. So if you want to hyper focus on just one to see how you can maybe use it a little bit more in your training or you know how you can adapt things if you are blending a little bit more towards the undulating or a block or a conjugate periodization. I'm gonna have all that in the description box. There's tons of information here that I've got for you. But again, hopefully you took one thing away from this video and I'll see you at the next video.